it's a really exciting event to come to. It's really not very often that you get to be at the 300th iteration of anything and to have to come to an event with such a long history and something that people have really told have driven the science forward is really very exciting. Um, there are lots of examples of Faraday discussions that have, that have, that have really led, led various different fields. Um, so you, know, you could argue that um, Faraday discussions have founded fields like polymer chemistry, um, conducting molecules, molecular electronics, and so on. In my own field, there was a Faraday discussion in 1986, which um, led to the invention of velocity map imaging, which is the main technique that I use in my own research. So it's had a big effect on me personally. Almost everybody can pinpoint a discussion where their field really took off and it was instrumental in driving their science forward. So I think it's really important for us to continue to build on this program, to listen to community about what they want, and make sure we keep doing that. The one that had the biggest impact uh, in my particular career, uh, without doubt, was um, the Faraday discussion in 1986 in Bristol. And we were able to present two papers of that 1986 discussion, one of which was the first report, uh, first description ever of using a so-called Rydberg tagging method to look at the photofragmentation of molecules in the gas phase. And that work has had a huge impact around the world. There are many groups who have used or are now using that technique. It has really helped to launch a number of fields and um, we do have a display uh, today showing some of the key landmark discussions. I think that's one of the really good things about a Friday discussion is that you really learn about what the hot topics are in that particular area. So it's good for people perhaps who are thinking of moving to another area because you know, through the discussion all that time talking to people, you really find out what are the important questions you need to put in your proposals that you're writing to try and get sort of um, uh, you know, developed in that area. If you attend these discussions seriously, then you've actually done a lot of legwork before you arrive. You've read these papers, you've thought about the papers. There's very short presentations and it's all about the discussion. And uh, so you really get into depth in the science. Um, and there's nowhere to hide for the you know, scientists who are presenting. I think the other exciting thing for an early career researcher is that you can read the paper, you can frame a, you know, a question you've thought about quite carefully and put that to you know, some world leading scientist and they have to treat your question in the same way as they do from an experienced person and sometimes that question leads to further discussion from other people in the audience and I think it's quite exciting as a fairly young person that your question has sort of spawned a, you know, a bit of a discussion you know, within the overall discussion. I think Faraday discussions are, are really important because um, the, the forum that they are enables um, students to challenge leaders in the field um, and it's, it's such a sort of unique family intimate atmosphere almost that they feel able to do that and they can talk to each other as equals. Um, and you don't get that at an ordinary, ordinary conference, but you, you do get that at a Faraday, and that's what makes them so unique. Well, every, everybody who attends a Faraday discussion is struck by how lively uh, the, the, the discussion is, um, and, and usually finds the meeting very, very stimulating. Um, I think really there's, there's, no wet, no, there's no better way to be brought up to speed on where a field is at and what is the future directions of the field in this country. Um, I think it's absolutely brilliant that, we, that we're on 300. You know, so as of today, I guess we've had 299 and a half Faraday discussions. Um, it's proven to be a format that people really, really like, um, having you know, short talks and long periods for discussion. We hold now eight a year, um, and they're all booked up well into 2022. So actually the biggest challenge now if you're trying to organise a discussion is actually to pick a topic that is still going to be interesting and, and cutting edge and so on in, in three or four years time when you may actually get a slot. Uh, I think people are just not aware of what a huge effort it is and it's largely uh, largely invisible I think to the people attending the meeting but there's a, there's a really um, very large workload, on uh, sustained workload on the RSC staff and uh, they simply couldn't happen without, so without that. It's very exciting for me, first of all, I'm still relatively new to the organisation so it allows me to meet a new part of the community, that's always great to hear what they want. Um, but personally, because my PhD is in this field, it's actually very exciting to meet people that I have read papers from, that I have come in contact with, and of course my PhD supervisor is giving the concluding remarks, so it's great to actually see him and some of the people from my group again. 
yeah, the, the things that I like most about Friday discussions is, is really seeing those interactions between the scientists and, and knowing that Friday discussions are all cutting edge, hot topics for science and, and just sitting there and knowing that, that history is being made um, during a Friday discussion meeting. It's a really great moment to reflect on you know, how the what's been done over the last hundred years uh, and uh, particularly thinking about Faraday himself uh, was one of the fathers of electromagnetism um, so it's extremely fitting that uh, the 300th anniversary meeting should be on the subject of plasmonics and I'm sure that Faraday himself would have been delighted 